The new features I'll be showing in this video are available in both desktop versions of Lightroom. Cloud-based Lightroom app and Lightroom Classic, with the exception of the final update that I'll cover at the end, which is exclusive to just Lightroom Classic. If you're not familiar with the differences between the two Lightroom apps, be sure to check out my blog post where I cover all the pros and cons of each version and provide some recommendations to help you decide which is the best version for you. I've included the link in the description below. It's also worth noting that these features that I'll be showing are only available in Lightroom 5.4 and Lightroom Classic 11.4. Older versions of either app will be missing these enhancements, so be sure you're running the latest versions. Hey everyone, now that I've got the disclaimer out of the way, I'm going to try to keep the rest of this introduction short and sweet so we can get on into the good stuff. In this video, I'm going to walk through the top five new features that came to Lightroom and Lightroom Classic with the June 2022 updates that I feel are the biggest changes and best enhancements for everybody to know about and take advantage of as we move forward with using the Lightroom ecosystem. That said, there are a ton of updates across both apps. <laughs> Honestly, if I tried to cover them all here, the video would probably be over an hour long. So I've gone ahead and put together a very in-depth guide to all of the updates for both Lightroom apps on my blog. So be sure to check that out so you're aware of all the new tools that are available. You can find the link to that post as well in the description below. Also, just a quick friendly reminder that if you find this video and other contents I'm releasing here on YouTube valuable, please be sure to give the videos a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so you know as I release new videos going forward, it really does help me out. It helps grow the channel and it helps me know that I'm on the right path in terms of providing you with valuable content. Speaking of ways you can help support me and this channel, if you really want to show your appreciation for the content I'm producing, you can make a small contribution via the new YouTube Super Thanks feature. I put hours and hours of work into producing these videos and writing up blog posts. And as of this past February, this is my only job. I quit my corporate job and I'm doing photography full time. So any voluntary contribution you can make of any size will be greatly appreciated as it will go directly to supporting my photography and helping me continue to create content for you here on YouTube. To learn more about how you can help contribute to my journey, please visit the About Me page on my website. Okay, enough rambling on here. Just one more quick note, Lightroom, the Lightroom Cloud app did receive a huge update that brings video editing tools into the application. I'm not covering that here, not because I don't think it's valuable, but because it's such a huge update. I wanna make sure I've got plenty of time to get my hands on it and play around with it. And if I feel it's warranted, I will be releasing a video on that as well so I can demo those new features and show you what it's all about. Now with that, enough of looking at me, let's jump on into the first demo. The first new feature I wanna cover is something I actually created a workaround video for just a few months ago, inverting complex masks. In this first example, I have a mask group or complex mask that consists of several individual masks that I've combined to do some dodging or lightening of various parts of the landscape. As you can see, when I expand out this landscape dodge mask or mask group, it consists of several sub masks within it. Previously, if I wanted to invert this mask and adjust everything but those areas, I would have had to first invert the main feature mask, then go through the other four masks one by one and convert them from add to subtract or from subtract to add. Now, with the newly updated Lightroom maps, you simply need to right click on the mask group itself or click on the three dots to the right of the mask group name and look for the new invert option. Prior to these updates, that wasn't available on a mask group, only individual masks within a group. Before moving on, let me hit the O key to turn on the mask group overlay. Now, when I choose the mask group invert option, it automatically does all of those manual steps that were done before. Even if you don't have the overlay turned on, you'll know it's done as the mask badges will automatically update as well. Needless to say, this is far easier than before and really simplifies the process of inverting a more complicated mask group. Now let's take a look at one more example, this time on a portrait photo I've used in a couple of my previous masking tutorials. On this photo, as you may recall, I've already created a complex mask group that includes an AI-generated subject mask and some other masks that I use to refine that subject selection. I'm once again going to go into that context menu by right-clicking or hitting the three dots to the right of the mask group name, but this time I'm going to choose Duplicate and Invert instead of just inverting the subject person-only mask. By using this other new option for inverting a mask group, I'll leave my original subject-only mask alone, and the new duplicated and inverted mask will be created, but with no adjustments applied to it. Your slider settings will all be zeroed out on the newly duplicated and inverted mask as it wouldn't really make sense to have the same adjustments applied as the original mask. Otherwise, at that point, you would just be adjusting the whole image identically, which kind of defeats the purpose of using masks. So now that I've created this duplicated and inverted new mask, I can go in and easily adjust the background of this photo without impacting the subject. 
Now in this particular example, we do have a problem. Since I excluded the pumpkin from the original subject mask I created to make edits to just the person, that pumpkin is now included in the newly inverted mask. In this case, I don't want that as any change I make to the background is also being applied to the pumpkin itself. All I need to do in this case is go into my new mask group that was created automatically and delete that pumpkin mask from the group. Now you can see that truly only the background of the subject is being impacted by the new adjustments I made while leaving the subject himself and the pumpkin alone. The bottom line with this update is this. In both photos I used as examples here, I was able to create an inverted mask in only a couple of clicks without having to remember the exact steps to do so manually like we had to do in the past. I think this one will be particularly helpful for portrait photographers, but even for me, a nature photographer, I see this being very useful for when I've created a complex sky mask that I then want to invert to make adjustments to just the landscape. Now let's look at another big update that also involves masking, the new automatic batch updates for AI-generated masks. Here we have some photos from my Utah trip that didn't make the cut from my final collection, which by the way you can find in my Utah gallery on my site, shameless self-promotion but they should be a good example to show you this next new feature within Lightroom and Lightroom Classic, automatic batch masking updates. Previously, if I went into this first photo and made adjustments to the sky using a select sky mask, and then wanted to sync those adjustments to the skies in the other photos, I had to manually recompute each mask on each image one at a time. With this latest update, when you choose to sync an AI-generated mask to other images, Lightroom now does everything automatically, as you can see, this new window pops up, letting you know what's going on and that it may take some time. But once it's done computing the new masks, you can see that the sky mask on each of the other images has the same adjustments, but they're also already recalculated to properly select the sky. The same concept applies to select subject masks. So think of a portrait shoot where you may want to apply the same subject corrections across, say, 30 photos. Out of all the new updates in these June 2022 releases for Lightroom, this is clearly the one that will save many editors the most time. Up next, we're going to take a look at some updates for presets, both of which are pretty cool. Here's a photo that I'm still working on a bit from a recent trip to southeastern Oklahoma. Now, I'm actually pretty happy with where I have this edit. It's pretty subdued, but that's fairly true to how I witnessed this foggy morning. But let's just pretend I want to see how some different presets may look on it. If you've read some of my blog posts, you may know that I'm not usually one to recommend presets as, for my landscape and nature work at least, every photo is different. There's no one-size-fits-all preset I can use to magically edit my photos. However, I'm also well aware there are millions of people that do use presets all the time, and Adobe has now given you the ability to change the intensity of supported presets with a simple slider. So let's go through here and find a preset for this image that looks good, such as this one. Okay, cool, I can live with that, but maybe I think it's a little too intense, or maybe I don't think it's doing enough to the image. Now I can simply come up to the preset amount slider, which became available as soon as I clicked on the preset to apply it, and dial in the actual intensity of this preset to find the level I like. You'll notice that the default level is 100. You can drop it all the way down to one to essentially turn it off, or boost it all the way up to 200 to really crank up the intensity of the adjustments. Previously, you were stuck with what you got. Now you have far more control, which is always a good thing. It's important to note that not every preset will support this right away, as a preset has to be configured specifically to take advantage of this new feature. That said, most if not all of the Adobe Premium presets that are included in your paid subscription to Lightroom already have this update. In the next demo, I'll show you some of the awesome new AI-powered presets that were added to Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. All right, now let's start with our good friend here, Pumpkin Man, for this next new feature. We now have a selection of presets that are linked to AI-generated masks for both Select Subject and Select Sky. You'll find them under your presets in the Adaptive Sky and Adaptive Subject groups. Let's start with Adaptive Subject. The first thing you'll notice is that if you hover over one of the adaptive presets, it will automatically start calculating to create the AI-generated subject mask. Once that's done, you can quickly hover on the other adaptive mask to see how they'll impact the image in real time. Pretty handy. I'm going to apply this Vibrant preset as I think that does a good job of helping them pop out from the background a bit. Now that I've done that, you can see that the preset amount slider is also available, so just like your other presets that support that new feature, you can adjust the intensity by dragging the slider left and right. This is such an easy way to quickly find an adaptive preset that you like and really dial it in. Then, if you had a series of photos with the same subject, for instance, if I had multiple versions of this stock photo, just with different poses or props, I could easily sync this adaptive preset to the other photos as applying the preset creates a mask with adjustments, as you can see here. Hopefully, you're starting to see how you can use all of these new features in combination with each other to really improve and speed up your editing workflow. Now let's take a quick look at the adaptive sky presets next. 
Here's another photo from Oklahoma that I was just kind of playing around with. I'm not really all that happy with how the clouds look in this particular photo, so let's see what we can do with the new adaptive sky presets. I'm just going to come over to my presets panel and open the new collection of sky options. Once again, as soon as you hover over one, Lightroom will automatically detect the sky and create a mask in the background. Now that that's done, I can hover on any of them to immediately see how they'll change the sky in this particular photo. As I go through these, I'm frankly not a big fan of any of them until I hit the sunrise preset. I actually think that looks pretty good and fits the overall look of the image. Just like with the adaptive subject preset I used on the previous photo, once I apply this sunrise preset, I can then go up and play with the amount slider to dial it in, back and forth, up and down, and find the perfect intensity level for the sky in this photo. Maybe right around 125 or so looks pretty good, I think. I have to admit that although I've never been a big fan of presets, I can actually see myself trying these adaptive presets on a good number of my photos to see if any work well. If they give me the results I want, why wouldn't I? It will be far quicker to use one of these presets than to start from scratch every single time. Even better, since these adaptive presets create a mask with slider adjustments, there's nothing stopping you from going in and tweaking things, either by adding, subtracting, or intersecting other masks, or by changing sliders. For instance, let's say I want to add a little bit of the orange glow I've added with this sunrise preset to the water in the lower right, since that's actually picking up a bit of the sky in the reflection. All I have to do is come to this sunrise mask that was created and add another mask. Let's go with a gradient mask for this. So let's add that gradient to reflect the warmth of the sky in the water. And there you go, you have full control over the adaptive preset masks that are applied. Unlike these first four features, this next one is only available in Lightroom Classic, but it'll hopefully get added to the cloud-based Lightroom app in a future update. Okay, for this last demo I want to show you, we're back to the sunrise photo from Bryce Canyon. Now, it's all well and good that Adobe added the ability to ramp up or down the intensity of presets, but what if we didn't find a preset we like, and we just went ahead and created our own mask to adjust the sky? Previously in Lightroom Classic, as shown in my old Adjusting the Opacity of Local Adjustments video, you would collapse down the Adjustments panel for any mask that you created and an amount slider would become available. You could then use that slider to dynamically adjust all of the slider adjustments you made on that single mask. They would automatically change in proportion to each other as you change the amount slider up or down. With this update to Lightroom Classic 11.4, that feature is gone. Instead, they've given us the ability to change the intensity of a mask adjustment via a newly revamped amount slider that works just like the preset amount slider. One important note on this. With the old amount slider, I compared it to changing the opacity of mask because, frankly, I couldn't think of a better term. This new masking amount slider does not change the opacity, so don't think of it like opacity in Photoshop. It changes the intensity of the applied mask. As I change the amount, notice that the sliders themselves do not actually change with this new update. This way you'll always know what your base adjustment was, which is what 100 on the amount slider represents, but it also adds another new ability. For the sake of example, let's activate this Orton effect mask I applied, and I'll crank the highlights on this particular mask to 100. In the past, that was the most I could adjust the highlights on a single mask. The only way to boost them further would have been to create another mask. Now, thanks to how this new mask amount slider works to change the intensity of a mask, I can move the amount slider all the way up to 200, which boosts those highlights up even higher, even though the highlight slider is already maxed out at 100. The best advice I can give you is to get in and start playing around. I'm finding this new way to easily change the intensity of masks to be extremely useful in helping me really refine the edits I'm applying through masks. Sometimes you like the effect you've got, but you just want to turn it up or down. Previously, you had to adjust every single slider or use that old amount collapse trick that I showed in the old opacity video. Now, the amount slider is always there and it truly impacts the actual intensity of the effect you've applied. And there you have it, my top five new features that came to Lightroom and Lightroom Classic with these June 2022 updates. As I said just a few moments ago, hopefully you can see how using all of these in combination with one another can really improve and speed up your workflow as you edit your own photos. Just a quick reminder, if you did find this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you know as I release new videos going forward. For instance, did you know I relaunched my weekly Lightroom in a Snap series in April of this year? Unless I'm out traveling, I'm releasing new snap videos every Sunday at 10 a.m. These are quick and short videos where I'm trying to show tips and tricks for both versions of Lightroom to help you get the most out of each application. You can find my Lightroom in a Snap playlist and others by visiting my main YouTube channel. And with that, until next time, take care.